Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duo Sarm here with another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, we are going to do item drops on enemy death. What we're going to do is we're going to create a currency coin sort of system where after you kill an enemy, it drops money. You pick up the money and you uh, can eventually go and buy things from a shop with the money. So we're going to do the shop in a later video. Right now, we're just going to handle the enemy drops. So anyway, the first thing you're going to want to do is navigate on the content browser on the left hand side here, down into our items tab and into our health tab. Click on the health pickup 2, the one we used for the video. I believe I made a health pickup 1 to figure it out myself, and then I did a health pickup 2 in the video series. I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and we're going to duplicate that. Change the name of the health pickup 2 to coin, I guess. And I spelled coin wrong, but you get the idea, so it'll be koi. And double click on the blueprint. In here, when we zoom in, we see that when we overlap this component, we cast our character, get the health, add the health, and then destroy it. So, for a money system, we're going to want the money to persist between different levels and all of that jazz, so we're going to minimize this and head on over into our Save Game tab on the content browser on the left side. In the Save Game tab, we have Save Game YouTube, whatever you named it is what you named it, and in this tab, we're going to go ahead and add a variable. So variables are on the left-hand side of the screen over here. Click on the variable, and we're going to want to call this variable money, or coins, or whatever you want to call it, whatever you want your currency to be called, I'll just call it money to make it the most simple as possible. The next thing you're going to want to do is make this an integer, since we're not going to have percents or coins or, or decimal points here in our coin system. It's going to be an integer, so it's always going to be a whole number. After that, just compile and save. The default value you want to be set to zero, so when you start the game, you don't start with money. If you did want to give the player like $100 to start, or 100 coins, or whatever the currency is, to start when they first started up the game, so they can like buy an upgrade and then experience it or all that, you would change it here, but we're not going to do that. Compile, save the money value will be zero. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to minimize this and we're going to open up one of these level one or level two loads right here. Let's go with level two load. So the reason we went with the level two load is because it actually has all of the different information that we need to go ahead and make this uh, coin pickup code that we need to use in the coin blueprint. So all you're going to want to do is highlight from about here the save game from blueprint thing over and we're going to copy that all directly in. So just highlight it, control C or right click copy whatever you want to do come on over to the coin and drop it in with control V. So all this is doing is we're creating the save game object just like we normally do. It's got the same exact blueprint name. All of that's good. We move all the way through. Does the save game exist? Yes, no. Create one if it doesn't. If it does, let's move on. Load game, cast to the save game, figure out what's in the save game instance here. And then we're going to go ahead and instead of setting the level two complete, we're going to add a random value to the coin variable that we just created. So compile and save. It should throw some errors because it doesn't know what this is, this reference to Save Game YouTube, but apparently it is okay with that, so that's mildly concerning. Maybe it's because it's not being executed yet, but uh, we'll see what happens when we get there. Anyway, so on this Set Level 2 Complete thing, we're going to get rid of that, and instead of setting Level 2 Complete, we are going to Get Coin, or Get Money, I believe I named it Money, Get Money, and we also want to Set Money. So we're going to get the current value of the money that we have, and then we're going to set the value of money to a new value. So what we do between here is entirely up to you. If you just wanted every coin to be worth a flat number, you would just do uh, type the plus key in, and it's going to be integer plus integer, except I hit increment, not uh, integer plus integer. So type in the plus key to do integer plus integer, and if you click that, you can add like 10 every time you pick up a coin to whatever they have and plug it in, and do that, and it's all, all be right with the cosmos. Now, most games, when you kill things, you don't get a flat mount. Uh, that would be the experience system. You get a flat experience. If you wanted to get something that was more random, what you could use is the random integer from range system. So if we typed in random integer from range, go ahead and click this and drag it in. Say we want the minimum amount of money to be 10 coins, and we want the maximum to be 100. It's going to pick a random number between both of those values and add it to the score, set it to the money, and save the game in the slot. So that's pretty cool. That saves all of that. So now what we need to do is get rid of all this health pickup information crap and leave the cast to character to make sure that we're hitting the character. Bring this back on up and connect the node. Now if I compile and save it should get mad. And yes it does. So the save game YouTube right here is not very happy being here because it doesn't have a reference to itself over in the variable side. So the easiest way to do this is to click this create save game object, right click this and promote to variable. That's going to add this new variable zero. And the new variable zero, we're going to go ahead and rename to save game YouTube. And then all we got to do is drag these pins back into their correct spots. So drag this one up here, drag this one up here, delete this guy, compile save. We're still going to have an error down here because we have the save game YouTube instance right here. 
So off of this, once again, we're going to right click, promote to variable, drag it down, change the name of the variable to save game YouTube instance. Instance, there we go, spelt it right. And hit enter on that. Once again, drag the pins into their respective nodes. So drag the set pin down here. Oh gosh, okay, that was a little blurry, but hey, you see it. So we dragged all of those back in here. Delete that. Control S, if we save again, we're still gonna have the issue here because of this money variable that doesn't really exist. So we need to drag off of this again, and we need to type in money. We're gonna get money, and we're also gonna set money. So the same exact thing we just did, uh, we just need to redo it. So I probably should have done this the first time around, but I guess it's good to show you what sort of errors can happen and how you would correct them, since a lot of people leave comments in the comment section wondering why things aren't working for them. Um, this could be why you're referencing variables that don't actually exist. So if we drag those in, drag those all around, I believe I've gone ahead and fixed everything that it's mad about. Yes, so compile, save, and you will have your uh, coin pickup co code error done. So next up on our list is we need to actually display this money value on the screen for the player while they're playing the game. So what we're gonna do for that is head over to the widgets menu. So our widgets is in the bottom left of our content browser that we created. And we're gonna go ahead and click on the HUD option right here. Double click that is gonna bring up our HUD. So our HUD, once again, you've already seen this before, but you know we have a health, we have a stamina bar, and we have a kunai remaining uh, bar right there. So the lazy way to do this is to just go ahead and click on the kunai remaining horizontal box, control C, and control V. That's going to paste the kunai remaining horizontal box inside of the horizontal box. We don't want that, we want it on the canvas panel. So basically, we can't do anything with this box, so in order to move it around, we've got to take it to the canvas panel. So click on it. Drag it up to the canvas panel, and now you can move it wherever your heart desires. So make it the size of our text blocks to make that a little bit easier. And then you can click the entire box and drag it wherever you want. So we're going to stick this in the top right corner, about even with the health bars. The next thing we need to do is we need to anchor that box to the top right corner. That way it's always in the top right corner, no matter how big the person's computer screen is, or cell phone screen, or however you're making this game. So click on the anchors menu in the top right over here where our slot canvas panel slot thing is located and pick the top right corner option. So that's basically going to make it so this box always spawns in the top right corner of somebody's screen. Now we need to change the text. So double click our kunai remaining and change the text to money or coins or currency or whatever you are using for your money system. That's going to change the name to money. And then the text block we need to rebind as to how we obtain this value. So to rebind this text box, we're going to click on the text box and we're going to click this get text one. We're going to remove this binding. This isn't actually going to be there for you. I screwed up the video when I recorded it a second ago. So here we go. Take two. But anyway, click this little text box, click the bind button and hit create binding. We're going to create a new binding get text two. From this binding, we need to do the same process we did when we loaded a variable in level two load again. So open up our level two load menu, click on the whole thing and highlight it and copy it on over drop that in like that. Now another thing I noticed about this blueprint that uh, I didn't notice before is this open level option that's going to be right here. So actually on this coin thing we still have the open level option so we do not want to load a new level whenever we uh, pick up a money. So delete that and get rid of that real quick. So make sure you do that once again in the coin blueprint that we had done earlier today where we went and added the values and put a random number of coins that we get every time we kill an enemy. Make sure you delete that, that open level thing that's sticking at the end of that blueprint. Anyway, back to the HUD, once again we're going to delete that same blueprint as well, or that same uh, open level coding little line there from the blueprint, and take us back here. So this is actually pretty simple, all we're going to do is drag this node off into here. So to get this text we're going to open the save game, set the save game to YouTube, does it exist, blah 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 blah, same exact thing, up until we get over here, but we're not actually going to change anything yet on this, so compile and save and we're going to see that we get the same errors we had earlier. So to fix these, once again, right click the return variable over here, promote to variable, and call it save game YouTube. So to do that, you actually have to do it on the bottom left panel here in Unreal Engine. It's not in the top right like it is on the other menu. So the variable name we're going to set to save game YouTube. YouTube. Okay. And once again, just like before, drag all of the nodes in that correspond with that. So drag all of those in delete, compile, save. Get the same error over here, the save game YouTube instance. So right click this one, promote to variable, drag it on down. Once again, name this save game YouTube instance. Drag in the same nodes once again to complete this one. Drag them all in. 
and delete that. Compile save. Now we have this level 2 complete and it actually worked this time, but we don't want to deal with that. We want to do the money again. So what we're going to do is delete that and we're going to connect this execute node into the text. So the return node, this is what shows up in the text box on the screen. Drag that over, drag it over to the end of this one, the save game menu, drag it in. And what we want to do is we want to take this and we want to get money. So get money, the variable we created earlier. Get the money, drag it into this node. We're going to turn it into text and connect all of these little lines here. So connect to the save game, connect to the return node, compile, save. So at this point, our text should pop up on the screen when we hop into the game. The keyword is should. Let's see if it actually works. So if we minimize this and we hit play, we see in the top right corner we have the money option up here. It says money zero. So we can make that look a little bit prettier with colon in some spaces. But for now, just to see if it works. Um, well, actually, we're not going to work because we're not going to pick up anything. So that's that. Kill that dude. All right. So to make actual money spawn in the level, let's just go ahead and test if our level item works. So click on items in the content browser in the bottom corner. We have pickups. We have the health option. And I should drag it out into its own option. But we have the money option to drag into the level this time. So let's position this so it's sort of in the right ballpark of items. All right, control Z and all right, good enough. So if we go ahead and hit save the level and hit play this time, and we hit the item, we got 79 coins. You see we had money over there, but the item still stays in the level. So we need to fix that. So if we double click on the coin blueprint to bring it back up. We're going to save to the slot. We do all of that. And then we want to destroy the actor after this is all done. So save and then drag off this, destroy, actor, and we're going to blow ourselves up. So now if we go back into the level, hit play, and I should actually probably show the level. We click it and we get 229. We got some extra money. So you can see that the money is persisting through levels, which is perfect. That means that our saving system is working. And yeah, so hit escape to cancel that. So we can just drop the coins into levels if we wanted to, to have like money pickups. You could have different values of coins. So if you like wanted to hide coins that are worth a lot of money in a level, you could create one that's worth more money or all that great stuff. But anyway, we have that system sort of in place here. The next thing we want to do is we want these monies or these coins or these health pickups or all these different items to drop from enemies. So if we click on the enemies folder, head down into our night one, and somewhere in here I should have a blueprint for running the night. So I think it's this night one. Actually, let me just click on him to make sure that I'm using the right one. I've made so many of these guys. He is night one A. So let's click on night one A. Okay, right here is where we have the dead night one A code line here going in place. Dead night one A causes the animation to switch to the dead night one A code line here that pops up and then he dies and disables movement. So from this disable movement command, what we're going to want to do is drag off of this and we're going to want to spawn an actor from class but I wrote it wrong there we go spawn actor from class that very top option up there so the class we want to spawn is going to be the coin so I spelt coin wrong I didn't put the n but hopefully you spelt it right and can put the proper name in there the spawn transform is the location where this is going to spawn or where this item is going to spawn so what we actually want to do is we want to get the transform from our character uh, the character that we just killed so to do that we're going to take this arrow one I guess this should work just fine if we take this arrow one and drag it down from here we're going to type get transform get world transform and drag that node in right there the option that we want right here is collision handling override always spawn ignore collisions we want this to spawn no matter what even if it's going to spawn on top of the enemy so whenever we kill an enemy he should drop a coin so if we head on over to our level blueprint here and click the play button control s to make sure we save everything and we hit play we pick up this coin, we get the money, and then we throw our kunai at our dude, and he dies. And you can see a tiny little black dot right there. And if we pick that up, we got more money, 373 we're up to. So that actually worked, it just didn't spawn it at the proper size. But that's okay for now, it's a working system, this video is kind of starting to get a little bit longer, and I want to show you how to randomly pick between options. So we're going to go ahead and close that off. So the actor that we want to spawn from class, right, we have the coin here, but what if we want to spawn either a coin or a health orb or a different item? So to do that, we're actually going to duplicate the spawn actor from class blueprint here. So we're going to go ahead and highlight all of this, control C, control V, and move it on up here. So what we want to do is we want to switch on an integer since right now we only have the different, um, the different pickups of health and coin. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this and we're going to do switch on int. So switch on int. So what this is going to do is switch the output depending on which variable you put or what number comes in. 
So we're going to add a pin and the selection is going to be random integer. So that same random integer function that we used before. But we want to use the one between. So we're going to type in random integer in range. So the minimum is zero and the maximum is one right now. So click both of those and we want to drag that return value into the selection. So it's either going to pick zero or one based on the options that you saw right there. So we're going to drag this in and if it's a zero, we want to spawn in the coin. And if it's a one, we want to spawn in the health pickup. So if we type in health, I believe it's health pickup two uh, is the one that's going to be there. So always spawn, ignore collisions, and spawn them in in that location. So compile and save, and I'll zoom this out a little bit so you can see what happened. I might have went a little bit too quickly there. Basically, after the movement command, we're going to switch on integer with a random integer between zero and one to either spawn a coin or spawn a health pickup. So if we head back over to level one and hit play, and we go ahead and pick up our coin pickup right there, fight this dude, he dies, you see the little orb spawns, we pick it up, we got a money pickup that time, so if we hit escape, play, and do the same thing again, throw the kunai at him, kill him, little orb spawns, it was a money pickup once again, if we hit play again, hopefully one of these times it does a health pickup, click it again, that time it was a health pickup. So. Uh, that just switches randomly between different drops. So if you wanted different dropped items throughout the game, you would do it like that, or you could do it like that. That is one way of doing it. The other way is setting up an array. But since there's so few items, this is pretty simple and straightforward for someone to do. Anyway, guys, that is basically it for the video. That is what I wanted to cover. So we have a loot item system, a drop item system, and a money system all created for our side-scrolling game, which is pretty freaking cool. If you did like this video, make sure to leave a like, check out some of the other videos on the channel, check out some of the other videos in this series if you happen to miss any of them, there's a lot of stuff that I just copy and pasted from other parts of this series, so make sure you check out the videos that correspond with them, they're pretty well labeled, they kind of have all the different things in them, so if you just wanted to skip and see how I did things, um, like for example the level 2 load, you can just click the level 2 load option or the video that says saving and loading levels, and watch that to see how I created that code, pretty simple and straightforward. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you at the next video. Peace.